Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's May 26th, and these are your headlines. So right now we have large stripers moving into three key areas in southern New England. Uh, you've got six days to catch your last spring tog before the end of the season in Rhode Island or before the season changes in Massachusetts. And we're hearing about a lot more weak fish catches this week. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, I just want to remind everybody that the giveaway is ongoing. In fact, it ends today. I'll give you till midnight tonight to catch a fish to impress me. Um, basically, the rules are quite simple. you got to catch a fish, take a picture of it with you in the, in the picture, and send it to danderson at thefisherman.com. I will put your entry in with all the others, and I'll pick my favorite one to win uh, a replica of this plug. I'm going to make for you in whatever color you'd like. I've got a couple. Um, I got a couple other lures to give away to runners up, and um, hopefully, you know, I'll, well, I'll be announcing the winner next week on the report, and uh, probably going to start another one. I'm just going to make sure I have bodies um, ready to be painted because uh, I'm not going to be standing in front of the lathe in June, July, and August here. So, I'm going to do my best to keep these things going. Um, but that's uh, that's all I got for you guys on the news end of things this week. So let's head over into Massachusetts now and see what's going on up there. I talked to James Jukes again this week. He said things have remained about the same. If you remember last week, he said that things kind of exploded uh, up his way. They had a lot of fish in that 26 to 33 inch range uh, with, with a couple fish over the slot reported and that's kind of the way things have stayed. Um, he said it's been really hard to get anything bigger than uh, you know 33, 34 inches, but he him, he himself did hook a good one, and um, you know ran off a bunch of line and then popped off. So no idea how big it was. He did say also that he heard about a 40 pounder taken up in Lawrence, but you may also remember from last week, Lawrence is a bit of a dog and pony show. Uh, a <laughs> lot of guys standing next to each other uh, and not a lot of courtesy. Let's put it that way. Uh, also, some unscrupulous practices going on there. A lot of guys keeping fish over the limit, under the limit, um, and the EPOs have been out in force uh, taking gear and writing tickets. So, you know, if it's, you know, if you can deal with that kind of scene, which I don't like to, um, that'd be a good place to go, a good shot at getting a bigger fish there. Um, but if you want my advice, steer clear. Uh, heading down from there, down to situated area, the same class of fish has been there. They've got a lot of those 26 to 33 inch fish uh, with some bigger ones mixed in. It's been a shore and a boat thing there, and it's been mostly in the daytime. Um, guys are throwing topwater plugs, they're throwing paddle tail shads and things like that, and uh, doing pretty well. You know, good numbers of fish. Uh, North River's been good, um, and then all the shore points headed down toward the canal have seemed to be producing any inlet, anything like that, any place you're getting some, you know, some accentuation of the movement of the tide uh, is a good place to try. If we pass by the east end out to Barnstable Harbor, as predicted, it's going off pretty good out there now too. The mackerel have moved in and that fishery is doing what it's supposed to do at this time of the year. Guys are getting a lot of those solid fish, you know, in the 30 to 40 inch range. And live mackerel, far and away, the most popular bait there. Didn't hear much from the outer cape this week. Um, although, I do have to mention that flounder fishing has picked up. Um, you know, if you may remember last week, things kind of slowed down from Situate all the way out to the cape. Uh, they picked up again this week with the slower tides, but we're coming back into the new moon again on Monday. So, you know, it's an ebb and flow thing here, but... Um, you know, if you've, if you've got some time before the tides really pick up, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, uh, get out there and get a good shot at, um, you know, putting a limit of flounder together, whether you're fishing Cape Cod Bay or more over toward Boston. Um, on the Outer Cape, didn't hear much since the weekend reports, but if you, uh, if you didn't read the weekend reports, there are slot fish on the outer beaches from Coast Guard up to LeCounts, um, schoolies in there as well, and then all the estuaries, you know, Nostin in the Pleasant Bay, uh, Bass River and all the ones that I'm not thinking of in between. They've got fish. There's some big blue fish on the beaches down there now. Um, but things get pretty interesting as we kind of cut through Woods Hole into Eastern Buzzards Bay. The closer you get to the canal, the more bass you're going to find. And um, there's some big ones. You know, over the weekend, 
We had we heard about a 49 pounder. Since then, I heard about a 46 that was taken from the surf. Um, guys are getting them. Most of the boat guys are fishing in the daytime and they're doing it on the dock. Big surprise there, right? Um, so any or anything like that, the dock or any big spook like a splash walk or something like that. These things are all getting some nice fish. Um, at night, it's been eels for the boat crowd, and then the shore guys are doing well on darters. Um, they're doing well on needlefish in some places. They're doing well on bottle plugs. They're doing well on red fins. Um, but there's just a lot of fish around. As you get into the canal proper, uh, last you know the end of last week was good in the canal and into the weekend. Um, and there were some really nice fish taken uh, up into the 40 pound class, and good numbers of you know smaller fish like. I don't know, 26 to 36 inch fish. Uh, good numbers of those running through there. That has continued into this week. Uh, I talked to East End Eddie, and he said that um, he, he got a 21 pounder this week on a guppy pencil. Seen a lot of bait along the shoreline, a lot of guys catching fish. Um, another one of his friends, Kenny Nevins, had a 40 incher down the East End on a savage sand deal. Um, and then I got another report from Ken Weber on Wednesday and he said he was there in the morning said there was no surface activity to speak of but there were lots of fish along the banks there were mackerel around there were big bunker around um, and he had lots of fish on various topwater plugs ranging from you know 20 inches up to 33 inches uh, also hooked into a much better fish near a bunker school that broke him off um, you know and I'm, I'm looking at this as a, as, a, as good news you know I mean you, you listen you look at the diversity of the way these fish that I just talked about were caught you had a fish taken out of pencil popper you had a fish taken on a savage you had a guy getting a really nice fish on and breaking it off throwing uh, magic swimmers along the bank so that tells me that there's a lot of fish in the canal you know and that they're throughout the water column and with the new moon coming on Monday, I think we may be setting ourselves up for another Memorial Day massacre. Uh, last one that I remember was like 2015, and it was just, it was batty. A lot of nice fish taken. There were, there were herring in the canal, mackerel in the canal, and just uh, thousands of fish, um, you know, in that 20-pound range, and then some bigger ones mixed in. Um, and I could see that happening again Monday, and if not Monday, maybe Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, maybe even Thursday. we got good tides throughout the middle of next week, so um, definitely something to keep your eye on there. Uh, back outside the canal again, there are the togging is still good, and uh, that limit is going to hold, the spring limit is going to hold until, my, until Tuesday, where it's going to go down to one fish. Um, also hearing about some sea bass being taken on some of the deep, deeper ledges now. And that season has only just opened, and uh, so far things are looking pretty good. Uh, on the freshwater side of things, definitely still hearing about plenty of trout being taken in the stocked ponds on the Cape and into interior Massachusetts. Uh, but for a more in-depth look at what's going on in the on the freshwater scene, let's toss it over to Roy Leva. Hey Dave, what's going on? Just checking in for this week. Uh, fishing out here in Western Mass continues to be strong. Uh, whether you're looking for, you know channel cats or stripers or shad. Uh, shad is starting to wind down a little bit. Um, also, Mass Wildlife, I think, is winding down on their trout stockings. Uh, so that, that should be coming to an end soon, but plenty of fish out in the rivers and creeks um, and lakes. Um, I'm pretty sure in a couple weeks or so, you'll start finding them a little bit deeper water um, and deeper holes. Uh, I'm gonna go carp fishing as soon as I get out of here. So I'm gonna do a little pack bait. I don't know if anybody out there has ever fished pack bait. It's a really good way to either chum or if you're casting out into like, say like the Connecticut River or something um, and you're trying to get your bait out pretty far and chum at the same time, pack bait is just designed to mold around your weight or your bait or your weight and your bait. Um, and once it hits the water, it begins to dissolve um, pretty fairly quickly releases a lot of scent into the water um, and kind of chums up the area where your bait is. Uh, great for boilies, uh, pop-ups, um, even dough baits, or even if you use maize for, for bait. Um, basically, I'm just taking some Quaker oats, some corn, sweet corn syrup, and then Kool-Aid. Uh, I like to stick to the red colors. Right here, I've got black cherry and cherry. Uh, strawberry's another good one. I actually just used the strawberry pack the other day. So I'll go ahead, mix this up in a bucket, uh, get it to a consistency where all the 
oats are sticky and they'll pack into a into a ball around either my weight or my my hooked bait and uh that's it we'll go from there all right hope to catch you next week thanks later thanks roy appreciate the report and uh that's what i have for you guys in massachusetts this week for more than 20 years anglers everywhere have come to know one thing that nothing says no to fish bites over in Rhode Island, this is really dominated by two fisheries right now. Either most guys are either fishing for blackfish or they're fishing for stripers. On the blackfish end of things, it's definitely waning down. Not so much because the fish are not biting, but just because so many people are now shifting their focus to stripers as more more and bigger fish move into the bay. Um, but plenty of uh, plenty of nice fish still being taken off. Uh, on the on the tog end of things you know fishing that you know four to seven pound range have been pretty common uh still getting fish in shallow water but now they're kind of diversifying a little bit so you're getting them in deeper water as well um jigs are still far and away the top producer and um you know really anywhere from the whole newport area up into the bay and then all along narragansett and out into south county the guys are getting these fish um, most of the fish I've been hearing about are being caught between 10 and 30 feet of water. On the striper end of things, up in, more and more fish are moving up into the bay now, um, and they are spreading out. So the, the bulk of the fish that I'm hearing about are being caught from Connecticut Point down to the north end of Prudence, and then kind of, kind of things kind of get a little foggy in the middle there, spend some action in Appanog Cove area. And then down toward Jamestown, we're seeing another uptick in activity there as well. Um, also heard about a good-sized school of fish that moved into Mount Hope Bay. Those fish were in the 20 to 25 pound class. And then, of course, there are schoolies and low slots throughout the entire area. Top water has been the most popular way to get them, but why wouldn't it be? It's the most fun. Um, bunker are also moving in now, some schools of bunker have been spotted throughout the whole area and I'm starting to see more guys getting them on a live bunker. The biggest fish that I've heard about have been right around that 40 pound mark. Um, but I'm expecting, you know, with this new moon coming on Monday, I think we're going to see another, it's going to go up another level. I think we're going to see some, some real bruisers move into the, um, move into the bay this week. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, guys have been getting fish on a variety of lures like the dock. Um, and now flutter spoons are starting to become more popular. Uh, some guys are getting fish on metal lips. And then, of course, as I already mentioned, live or trolled bunker are definitely getting it done. Uh, there's been striper action with some bluefish along South County as well. Um, that's mostly due to the fact that there's just a lot of squid moving in out that way. Um, and it's just firing things up. The fish that I'm hearing about being taken from the breachways are mostly... 25 to 35 inch fish uh, a couple fish over 40 inches reported though uh, but you know whenever we see an influx of squid like this we all start to think about fluke and they are around but getting a keeper has been tough um, along the beaches but they they you know keepers are being taken and um, sea bass is now back on the menu and uh, you know they love squid too so guys are getting you know getting better and better numbers of sea bass uh, with some scup mixing in with them also and the only other thing that that's kind of exciting that's going on in uh, Rhode Island right now is it looks like we're going to have another good week fish year. I've been hearing about some good fish being taken from the Upper Bay, uh, some you know some nice sizes. You know, fish up to 30 inches have been taken. Um, and then also along the sand beaches, guys are getting some of them as well. Some of them being caught on baits intended for fluke. Um, but you know, if you want to go and target them, especially up in the bay, just look for those places. You know, any any piece of land that's going to accentuate the tide um, and you want to fish you know you want to start at slack water and fish fish into the moving water those those um, those fish really seem to respond to that moving water I think that's why they call them tide runners right um, and bright colored soft plastics always seem to be the way to go so if you haven't caught a weak fish you know got a good shot at getting one right now so um, those are the types of places that I'd look and over in Connecticut you know, it's, that's another area we're seeing more and more bigger bass moving in now. Um, a lot of the fish that I'm hearing about are being caught either around the mouth of the Connecticut River or way west. Uh, there's been some really nice fish taken out in the west end. I talked to Max, um, and he filled me in on what he's going to talk about in his video, and I'd definitely stick around for that. 
Um, definitely got some nice fish in the wind the other day. Um, but even up around the mouth of Connecticut River, surf guys and boat guys have been scoring some really nice fish, um, anywhere from you know 18 up to 35 pounds. And a lot of this action is happening during the day. Guys are getting them on big top water plugs um, or big soft plastics. Uh, so those that's something that you can definitely hang your hat on. Definitely some good fish there. Also, as I mentioned last week, there were some fish moving into the race. Well, that has gone full tilt. Um, last week they were all they were all in there on the ebbing tide. Now it doesn't matter. There's so many fish in there. You fish the ebb, you fish the flood. Uh, those fish are in there and they're being taken on just about every imaginable method um, but we all know three weighing bucktails is one of the most popular ways to fish in there or diamond jigging and uh, those methods are taking lots of fish. Uh, as we move out west um, that's where the fluking has been you know the most reliable although most of these guys you know from let's say from Clinton west uh, most of these guys are still crossing over into New York waters. Um, but if you really, you know, if you're dead set on getting a keeper fluke, I would head to Montauk or the Peconics. But we're starting to see more fluke moving over onto our side. Um, and they're going to be relating to those, um, those squid schools as well. So keep an eye out behind fishers. You might find them there. And, you know, really anywhere else, else throughout the sound. Uh, sea bass action. Again, it's going to be better the further away from Connecticut you get right now. They're, they're moving into the sound, um, but just not in the numbers that you're going to find on the outside. Um, so, you know, the, that season is open and the catches are popping, but you you got to take a little bit of a ride to get them. And uh, let's toss it over now to Max from Fisherman's World Here's what and hear what's happening out in the western sound. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. We got a lot going on in the sound this week. We've seen a lot of big fluke, a lot of black sea bass, the monster stripers have moved in, and a lot of porgies starting to flood inshore. The striped bass fishing has really picked up in our backyard, like the Triangle area, 20HC, 11B, the OB. The guys are doing really well, diamond jigging, trolling mojos, umbrellas, bunker spoons, you name it. We've seen fish almost tip the scales at 50 pounds. And then to our west, it seems like the Greenwich kind of bite kind of died. It got away from the next wave. But guys off Rye, all the way down the Marinick, Execution Rock are doing really well. We've had a lot of big bluefish starting to show up. These fish are going to stay in the deep water for now. There are some around the islands. But if you want your best bet at blues, I would get out in the mid-sound, troll wire with like deep divers or umbrella, which will be your best bet. We've actually seen a lot of weak fish this past week too. Guys are doing well in the harbor, drifting the sandworms or like small little mag darters, small pink soft plastics. And then porgies, porgies are really starting to flood in. Guys are doing better like the 30 foot range. They should start flooding as our temperatures warm. The guys will start down from the beaches. And then black sea bass, I would stick to like the 30 and 50 foot mark. Guys on top of wrecks, stuff like that, deep water reefs. There's a lot of wrecks outside Kakini and then wrecks on 28C, places like the Celtic and then working Budge Reef as well. You know, clams, squid on high-low, or they'll take diamond jigs, butterfly jigs, slow pick jigs. And then the fluke fishing is really starting to pick up on our side now. Guys really don't have to go across to try to find their limit. So can 26, can 24, and like the 25 to 30 foot range, we've seen fish to like 28 inches, which is actually really nice. Uh, bucktails, you know, tip with gulp, squid strip, stuff like that. Thanks and good luck. Thanks, Max. Really appreciate you taking the time to uh, send the report over. And uh, hopefully you and your mom got into some fish today. I know you were uh, I know you were finally going to get her out of the boat. That sounded like a good time. So that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully you find them useful. And, um, you know, definitely want to send me your pictures, whether I get them in, you know, whether I just use them in the report or the magazine, or if you want to enter to have me build you a special lure. Um, definitely worth it to, you know and, I, and of course I love seeing the fishing shots I love I love seeing what you guys are doing so get those into me at dAnderson at the if you're not a subscriber definitely head over to the check out what we got going on I think you'll be impressed and I think you'll find that it's the best 30 bucks you can spend at fishing I appreciate you guys thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next week
Here's the Dreamboat Fishing standings as of May 26th. Garrett Weir is holding first place with 20 points. Bob NTC is in second with his 15-pound bluefish. Bobby Cifarelli in third. And a new fourth-place holder back from last year is Andreas Brundler with nine points. New to the board is Peter Jenna with a second-place porgy at 2.97 pounds. Joe Menio with a three-pound sea robin. Sean Brownyard from the Great South Bay with a 2.81-pound sea robin. And right behind him is Fernand Ledge with a 2.8-pound sea robin. Now's the time for great bluefish and flu catches. So, folks, the categories are wide open. You're bound to get on the board. Good luck. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft 23 Miami powered by a Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. Hey everybody, it's Dave Anderson with a New England edition. Just going to give you a quick rundown of what's going on on the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. We had quite a few nice entries come in. We'll start things off with the weak fish, Jose Negron. Came in with a 25 and 3 quarter incher, which was good enough for second place in the category. But Mike Radzizuski now leads the category with 27 and 3 quarter inches. We also had a nice bluefish that came in from Michael Kelly. That's a second place finisher at 33 inches. And the big fish of the week was caught by Ken Stark, a 47 and 3 quarter inch striped bass. If you look at the top three ranking, you're going to see Justin Oser is still leading with five points. Then we have Davis Porter and Bob Stuber, both with three points. But the fact of the matter is there's actually five guys with three points. And the only reason that these two have been chosen to take second and third is because they entered fish earliest in the tournament. We got a lot, a lot of time to go. We have many, many months to go here and things are going to get more and more exciting. Okay, looking forward to seeing what you guys have next week. Good luck out there.